It's no secret that I have really loved the new 10th generation iPad. I am really impressed by the new form factor and the fact that they changed the camera to be on the landscape orientation instead of portrait orientation. And a lot of the, the, the new keyboard accessory too is really impressed me. But the fatal flaw of the new iPad has been the fact that it uses the first generation Apple Pencil. And since it has a USB-C port, that makes the way you have to charge and pair it a complete mess. So the way to fix this is pretty simple, and that is to use an alternative stylus. And so you can get some pretty cheap ones on Amazon for around 20 bucks that you can pair via Bluetooth. But I will do you one better if you are willing to spend a little bit extra money and introduce you to the Logitech Crayon. Now, this is by far not a new stylus by any means. I think it's been around since when the first iPad Pro was announced, maybe. So maybe around 2017, 2016-ish. I'm not sure, but this crayon for sure has been out there for a while. It was never on my radar before because the Apple Pencil was just a relatively seamless charging experience and pairing experience and first generation accessories are usually pretty good. But now that Apple has gone out of their way to make using the new Apple Pencil a complete chore on their new iPads, I would really encourage people to look for alternatives. And let me explain why I think this is kind of a lifesaver if you have purchased the new iPad 10th generation, just like I have. So the first thing is that this charges with USB-C. So you don't need any adapters like you get with the Apple Pencil first generation in the box. This is the USB-C to lightning adapter that comes with the box of the new first generation Apple Pencil. You don't need any sort of adapters because if you have your charging cable for your iPad, you can just go ahead and plug that right into the Logitech Crayon down here. You can see it's a USB-C port right there. You go ahead, you plug that in, and you are able to charge it pretty seamlessly. The next thing that I really love about this is that there is no pairing required at all with the iPad. So what that means is you don't have to plug it in anywhere into your iPad or go to your Bluetooth settings in the iPad and try to pair it and make sure that it connects because sometimes Bluetooth pairing can be a pain and that was the one thing I liked with or that's something I like with the Apple Pencils is that the pairing is pretty seamless except this time. But there is no pairing required which kind of still blows my mind. I'm still not entirely sure how this works. And it has great precision too without any Bluetooth pairing. So I'm completely unsure how it works, but it works. And that means that not only can you use this on your iPad that you're using all the time, but if you have multiple iPads, you can use this Logitech Crayon with that as well. So for example, if you have an iPad Air and you have the new 10th generation iPad, you don't need to switch any Bluetooth connections at all. All you have to do is start using it and it works seamlessly between all your iPad devices. It won't work on your iPhone, of course, but it works on all the iPads. Whereas the Apple Pencil first generation, even with this adapter, so the whole point of this adapter is so that it plugs into the USB-C port of the new iPad. And so you might think that you could also use this on any of your other iPads that have USB-C ports like the iPad mini or the iPad Pro or the iPad Air. But that is not something that is true. I've tried it. If you plug it in to any of those devices, it will say accessory is not supported. And so you won't be able to use the first generation iPad with other iPads. You're only able to use it with just the 10th generation or 9th generation or older or any of the other iPads that have been compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil. But any of the newer iPads that are not just iPads, so an Air, a Pro, or a Mini, you cannot use the Apple Pencil first generation. But with the Logitech Crayon, it's very easy to use it between all your iPads uh, without having to reconnect and repair. The next thing that is actually pretty great about the Logitech Crayon is the price. It is only $70, whereas the first generation Apple Pencil is $100. So you're saving yourself 30 bucks and you're getting a better stylus if you have the 10th generation iPad. Now, what do I not like about this? I think the biggest problem for me is the form factor. The good thing is, is that it's pretty flat. If you can see here, it is very flat. So it's not gonna roll off the desk when you're setting it down. 
but there are no magnets on it so if it's not able to attach to your iPad anywhere so I think it's a little bit easier to misplace it also is um, a little less ergonomic in my opinion because it is rectangular and flat whereas the first generation Apple Pencil is round and it feels more comfortable and more like a pencil in your hand um, and it was just a lot more ergonomic and fun to use. Um, also this plastic or aluminum, I'm not sure what kind of material this is. It's, it feels a little bit more industrial and you know not as luxurious as something like the Apple Pencil, but those are pretty minor gripes in terms of the design. Um, it's still very usable. Um, it, fits, it fits okay when you're writing. Like I haven't had any problems with it writing, but if I had to choose, I would prefer um, the Apple Pencil form factor instead of this you know rectangular sort of stick-like form factor. In terms of the writing experience, between the crayon and the Apple Pencil, it was incredible. Almost completely indistinguishable. I was so blown away and so impressed by how well it would write. Now the caveat with it, which to me is actually an advantage, but if you're an artist, this would, or if you just prefer this, it might be a disadvantage, is that there's no pressure sensitivity. So if you need the pressure sensitivity, then you would have to go with the Apple Pencil. Maybe there are other styluses out there as well that also support the pressure sensitivity on the iPad, but I'm not aware of them. I only know of the Crayon, um, some cheaper alternatives, and the Apple Pencil. Um, so even with the cheaper alternatives, I don't really, I don't think you get pressure sensitivity. Um, and unfortunately in the crayon, you don't either. Now for me, I really dislike pressure sensitivity when I'm taking notes. Um, I don't like to see the changes in the pressure because I'm taking notes digitally, so I want them to look pretty uniform. So I prefer that it doesn't have that pressure sensitivity. But if you're an artist, that is definitely something you might want to consider. Or if you just like to take notes with pressure um, and have pressure sensitivity, that is also something you'll have to consider. But in terms of the latest and see on all the devices compared to the Apple Pencil, I could not tell a difference at all. And I'm really, really particular about that kind of stuff. I have tested this on the 10th generation iPad, on the iPad Air, on my iPad Pro, and it tracked very well with how the Apple Pencil worked. It was practically indistinguishable. I was really blown away by that. And in fact, I think I actually prefer the tip a little bit more on the Crayon compared to any of the Apple Pencil tips out there. Um, uh, I don't know why, but it just it just seems to write a little bit neater, but that could just be like in my head some bias. I haven't like actually tested it, but just the feel of it, and maybe because it's very new, it just felt like it was writing a little bit better than the Apple Pencil. The only other problem with this, which I don't think is going to be a huge deal for most people, is that you cannot have this, you cannot use this with your iPad if you also have the first generation Apple Pencil connected. Now, the reason this is probably not going to be a big deal is because most people are not going to have multiple styluses they're using with their iPad. Um, I just happened to be testing these, both of these, so when I had this connected and paired with my 10th generation iPad, I wasn't able to use the crayon until I disconnected the, the Apple Pencil. So that was a little bit annoying because I was switching, trying to switch back and forth to test them and I had to keep disconnecting the Apple Pencil. And if you've seen my other video, you know how much of a pain it is to reconnect the Apple Pencil back into the iPad every single time so yeah that was really frustrating but overall I think this is a fantastic substitute for the Apple Pencil first generation for users who are specifically interested in buying the 10th generation iPad the very brand new iPad that has just recently been announced so I think that especially for those individuals because it's really ridiculous the way you have to connect the Apple Pencil into the iPad I would definitely go ahead and look into something like the Logitech Crayon instead. So I'm very happy with this crayon. I am definitely going to keep this and have it in my back pocket in case I want to use it in other devices. But let me know what you think if you have tested out the Logitech Crayon and what you think of the Apple Pencil charging fiasco with the new iPads in general. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.